Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a knitting tutorial, but it means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own knitting project. If you're like me and really enjoy content while you work, uh, sometimes you can find that it's very visually engaging and you're several hours in and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your project as you would have liked to. So that is where I come in. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. We are continuing with the bold baby blanket that is available as a free pattern on Yarnspirations. And you can see in the description box, I do have it available if you would like to work on it yourself. It does use DK and I am using the paint box baby DK yarn that is available through lovecrafts.com, but they have like a little tab where you're at loveknitting.com for like all knitting stuff. So this is um, a very light lilac color and you can see that I have like these three color blocks right now and I'm in the third color block obviously one two three but there are four color blocks total um, if you take a look at the pattern some of my other videos that I've worked on this do show what the final product should look like uh, based on the sample and I just chose to go with more of like a monochromatic theme for this but we're here we are working on line 47 or row 47 and there are 82 rows in each color block. So I hope you're having a good day wherever you are. It's Sunday night. I am getting hungry. It's almost time for me to go downstairs and start cooking. Well, actually, I'm really not going to be cooking anything. I'm going to be uh, boiling some water to stir in some powdered soup. <laughs> that is what I'm going to be doing. Um, so yeah, nothing too crazy, but I wanted just to throw something on the stove really quick that doesn't require a lot of attention from me. And hopefully that'll be fine. Uh, usually the soup lasts us a few days, so I know somebody has been snacking like crazy. It's actually not me, believe it or not. Um, I've been so focused on just trying to get through my work day that I haven't been snacking as much. Like I'll still take my lunch break and everything, but as far as like hopping in the kitchen every 10 minutes or so, it's actually my partner who has been. And we do have quite a selection of snacks. Um, in my previous episode, I was talking about how I made a mirror cake, like a glaze, and I made a coffee cake the weekend before that, and I want to make some raspberry scones pretty soon because uh, my supervisor gave me a recipe. And she keeps telling me, like, I need to make them because they're so good. So I was like, okay. So I got the frozen raspberries. I got the heavy cream because you need to mix in some cream and then brush them with the cream after. And I got um, some lemons because you have to put lemon zest in them. And it made me think about making lemon crinkles uh, cookies because I haven't done that in... A long time maybe like two years and I love those well, actually my partner really likes them too and I have like I would say a buttload of powdered sugar which just means a whole heckin bunch of powdered sugar from my mirror glaze cake that um, I can make the crinkles because you, you dip them in the powdered sugar and then when they bake they kind of expand and get all crinkly. Um, so I have enough for two different things with that and I have enough heavy cream because 
uh, a friend of mine made a creme brulee and made it Earl Grey flavor. And I'm like, that sounds so good. And again, um, I haven't made creme brulee in even longer than the last time I made the lemon crinkle. So it's like, ooh, we should do that too. So that'll be coming up as well. Because my partner also enjoys creme brulee. I do too, but it's... I was going to do like the blowtorch method, but I have the blowtorch, I, but I'm so afraid to use it because I haven't used it in so long and I just don't want it to explode and I just have this fear <laughs> that it's going to explode because it's like a little old, like a compressed, I don't know. So I found out there's a way you can still do the creme brulee part without needing a blowtorch and all you have to do is heat up a spoon and put that on top of the sugar to melt it. I was like, hey, I can do that. I have lots of lighters because I have candles and stuff, so I could definitely do that. So I'm excited for the next month or so of continuing with the baking. Because honestly, this year, or at least this winter, I haven't done that much baking. Uh, just because I've been I haven't really had all that much motivation to but now that I'm like hmm okay maybe one more month of being in the house maybe longer maybe not but now that I kind of have accepted where I am with this that I can kind of start to venture out and do some more things that I had on my mind um, to, to do this year that I hadn't yet And baking is one of them. But, yeah, I have, like, some days off, too. Quick, like, days off. Like, what is that plan at work? Um, my supervisor really wants us to use what we have before we lose it. So she's kind of, like, make, kind of, sort of, strongly encouraging us to take time off before... Uh, the end of the fiscal year, which is in the summertime, so I'm thinking, I'm like, well, there's not really anything I can do, but if I don't have to set my alarm for a day and don't have to answer emails, then that's nice. <laughs> But, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with all that, like, what I end up doing. So I get all extra quiet when I'm working on a part where I need to count. Um, it's... To the point where I can pretty much visually tell where I am and what I need to do, but there are some parts where it's not that easy, and so I do have to kind of stop, kind of look at where I am, count my stitches, and then I can move on from there. But thankfully, it's getting a little bit faster for me um, as far as checking real quick to see where I am. But I still have to make sure that I don't lose track. Because I have already, even without like talking to you guys, um, while I'm working on this uh, at my desk, I will do something too soon and then I won't know where I need to be. <laughs> so like here, it looks like I may have given myself an extra stitch because I have two before the one that I need to slip. And here I have the right one and that's one, two, three, four, five. Yes. So I'll have to do an extra. Which is super annoying. But thankfully, like, 
it's not that noticeable, but it is still annoying because it's like, ugh, what did I do wrong? Now I have to be like even more careful to make sure. Yeah, so you only have to have one stitch that's before the little like slip thingy you have to do. So you slip two and then you knit one and then you pass those two back over to make this the little ridge on the front side. So if you have two before that means you have to slip three. which means I either didn't yarn over or I didn't knit through the right one on the second side because I have an extra stitch like I did something wrong <laughs> don't know what it was Worry. Okay, perfect. Then I don't have that much left to do, um, at least for this this row. Um, I feel like I don't know something like doing this and watching or listening to a video just makes the time go so fast. But here we are. You know, I hear my, my neighbor and it sounds like they might be on like a Zoom meeting, honestly. It sounds like a very formal conversation. Um, so my question to you is, do you use Zoom? Do you have to use it for your work? Or are you guys using a different um, software client? We, at my job, we're using Zoom, um, but I have heard of people using Microsoft Teams, and I've heard of people using WebEx, which I have used before for other things. Um, not my, my job specifically, like our meetings, but conference style meetings with other services and stuff like that that have put on either programming or have wanted to do a meeting on their end and they had a WebEx client instead of a Zoom. So let me know. And then has anybody already jumped on the the Zoom stock before it probably cost like a million dollars a share? I mean, that's one thing you wouldn't, what'd you think about that? Like, Zoom being so valuable right now, um, I was watching something where they said there are about 10 million users of Zoom typically uh, before this all happened, and now there's like 100 or 300 million or some, something crazy. I don't think it's 300 million, because I think there's about 300 million people just here in the United States. There's a, there was a surge, um, a surge, a big, big, big surge. I think if I had money to invest in stock or a financial advisor, I would think of something, what, like, what would be like an obscure thing like if you had the, the means to, to contribute to some kind of stock, what would be um, like an obscure stock to invest in now that nobody would even like bat an eye at that would magically become really, really important like five, 10 years from now? Like what do you think would it, what it would be? Um, 
I would think maybe, well, now it's like, oh, webcams, like webcam technology, because webcam technology is crud compared to like, like a, a fancy camera or your phone. And it's like, how come webcams still are like the worst cameras? I don't know. It's definitely not like ink toner, I don't think. And it's so funny because uh, we went to Target yesterday um, and uh, we were getting low on toilet paper and low on facial tissue. Some other, some other goods we were low on, so we were like, alright, let's just go, uh, it's so hard to get a delivery to come to your house for, like, the regular groceries, because everything is just on, like, a, we'll get to you and we get to you window right now, um, but it's like, if I need it today or tomorrow, it's not going to be guaranteed, so I can't risk that, so we went in person. And my partner, shout out to my partner's dad, uh, because he sent us a bunch of face masks he made. Um, he's really, really handy, uh, really crafty too. And so he made a bunch of face masks and he sent us like a care package of face masks. So we have more and we had the ones that I made and we had the ones that I bought that came in later. So we're, we're set for face masks. So that's good. Um, we went to Target and I have to print something that I usually would print at work but because I can't go to work I don't have I have a printer but it's old and I haven't used it in so long I, I know the toner is, is dried out so it's like okay well let me see if Target carries uh, the toner that works with or like the ink cartridge that works with my printer and they do so it was so funny because I was looking on the Target app to just see if they had any cartwheel offers and things, or I think they're calling it Circle now, or something like that. Um, but it's like they're, if you use the app in store on their specials, then you save an extra whatever percent uh, on the, the product. There are always different sales, different deals. You can either get like a dollar amount or a percentage off the select goods and if they're already you know something you plan to buy even better um, but I didn't see anything really for the stuff I needed so um, so we carried on and I was like oh I need ink but they had some in stock at the store and surprisingly the toner is expensive for what it is but they also had on sale the printer like the newer model of the printer I have same brand same same um, line but newer model and it's cheaper to buy this printer at least the online offer was cheaper than buying the toner and it came with a toner I'm like, what? <laughs> How is the printer cheaper than the toner? And I was like, well, might as well just buy a new printer. And then my partner finally was like, no, no, I can print it when I go into work because I had to drop some stuff off. So I was like, okay, because I need to print this thing because I have to mail something and I need a document signed. So hopefully that all st stays true. Um, so I was like, I could have just bought the toner then, or the printer. If the printer was still on sale in person, like in store, I would have walked out with that printer instead because I'm like, why would I spend all this money on this toner when I can buy? I mean, not like, I mean, my printer is one. It's not even wireless, and this printer is. So it's like, it's already an upgrade. It's more compact, sleeker, and it came with a toner all for less than me just buying the toner I needed. Like, what? Crazy. And I would love if it was wireless, because then I could actually leave it, like, here, because it's stored away in this room, 
but I have to bring it out, get the cords, and I just haven't used it in so long because it's such a hassle to set it up to print when I'm usually at work when I would need to print. So I didn't see why I would need to use it so much, but now that I'm not at work, that's a problem. Uh, I'm probably not knitting am I knitting to the back of these? I don't know. I feel like I'm probably supposed to be knitting through the back loop and I'm not noticing because I am talking. But I feel like I would because it's so hard to not knit normally if you're not knitting through the back loop so I probably am and I'm just going through it so quickly I just don't even notice I'm doing it but that could be what's messing up my num my stitch count when I go back on the other side wouldn't doubt it at all but oh, I just had to look at my my backup battery uh, I had to charge it because you never know it's been a while I don't know how well they hold a charge if they're not in use for a week so in case the one that's in here now decides to kick the bucket I have one on standby um, but anyway why was I talking about going to Target oh yes because the toner and the toner relates to what stock that I would or wouldn't invest in to think it would be needed later in the future. Like who thought hand sanitizer, who thought cleaning products would be like, whoo, people want this stuff. Um, and then in relation to the webcams, like people who may not have one or probably had to go out and buy one so they could conduct their, their meetings if they couldn't figure out how to download apps and use their phone as their webcam for their their conferences and stuff um, but webcams still horrible quality all these years I still have the same webcam that I had since 2007 um, when I first got my laptop that I also still have but I never use um, but it has all my iTunes music on it so I kind of feel like I have to keep it just to use my iTunes music but even now I'm like streaming most stuff through like Spotify but I can't get everything, so that is a reason to keep that around. Um, but it's, it's crazy. Uh, let me see, something, I'm thinking like what super creative that I could say will be something to invest in now that will be cool or important later down the line. Um, and this is, this is totally just like being facetious. It's not like this is what I'm really gonna put my money into because uh, you need to do more research than that. Um, but I would say if I could choose something, it would probably be, um, what's something like super, super, super random. Uh, it would have to be some, I feel like it'd have to be either something like self-care related or some kind of like market essential like flower or I don't know something I feel like it'd have to be something that you might not necessarily be able to get yourself um I'm not saying that this is gonna happen again but let's say something like it oh my gosh <sighs> I did not have any coffee today. I don't know if that could help me though. Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe. I almost wanted to say like Keurig cups, like because people would still have to make their own coffee because they can't go to like Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or anything like that, but. It could be as simple as like investing in salt. 
because you need salt. <laughs> salt has iodine in it. If it was iodized, it does. And that's a mineral that is good for you. So, salt. There you go. So random. Makes no sense. Maybe even like, um... Maybe body wash. Because watch. Global warming, or as some people like to call it, climate change. It's going to make it so, so hot that everyone has to take showers all the time. And you're going to be going through a lot of body wash. There. There. Body wash. That's it. That's mine. <laughs> what would you think? It would be something to predict in the future that would be worth investing in now that um, you wouldn't think about needing later on. That's now like everybody needs it so the demand is high and the supply is low. So the stock is plentiful. And this is all just like I mean, if you want to take it there and be serious about it, go ahead, but I'm not, so don't think you have to pick something, like, super, super well thought out. Um, and, of course, this isn't real, so it's not like you have you have to do what you invest, you have to pick what you invest in for real, like, just for fun. <laughs> so, yes, I think my final answer is body wash. But speaking of something of supply and demand, I'm hearing that more and more shelters are being emptied because people are adopting the animals. And that's such a good feeling. Like, I feel so good about that. Just to, I mean, it's different than like a Christmas puppy or an Easter rabbit to get to your kids. Like those sensational Ad animal adoptions where it's more like a gift than it it's like a meaningless purchase or adoption but like I'm hoping that the people are that are bored aren't just like I oh, know I need some company let me get this animal and then once you're back to your crazy busy life you're like mm, actually I cannot take this animal into my house and I don't have any time for this animal so I'm hoping that you know this all like what's gonna happen after is being thought out so the poor animals don't end up back at the shelter and there's like a surge of people who are like I got this animal and now I can't take care of this animal but for those who are like in it for the good reasons to really think you know now is a good time um, to train my animal if it's a puppy potty train my animal because I'm home and I can work with them um, train them um, work with the boundaries and stuff with my animal without worrying about them, then now is a good time. But, uh, who knows? But I'm really glad to know that, at least for now, the shelters are being emptied out for good reasons. People are realizing that adopting an animal is such a rewarding experience and so awesome like I love my cats I you know I just woke up this morning and they were just like poof like on me like they I think they were cold <laughs> no well not necessarily because you know what I was up pretty late I was up late and they were downstairs with me and then by the time I came upstairs to go to bed they came up with me and they could have easily gone in there with my partner and slept on them because they were like dead asleep and easily a source of heat but they waited for me and they waited for me to come to bed so that they could cuddle with me and when I woke up they were cuddling with me and that's good and even my girl Kabu she'll she'll just like follow me around that's so rude camera um I was on a roll I hope I was done talking about stocks, but if not, I would invest in body wash because my prediction, my pretend prediction is that global warming will become such an issue or climate change will become such an issue that people will be so warm that they have to take multiple showers a day and they need body wash obviously to clean your body off the sweat. So body wash stocks will go up 
supply will be low, demand will be high, so I would fictitiously invest in body wash in the future to um, be my pretend like get rich quick stock investment. So with that, uh, what would your joking or pretend stock investment be based on what is like an obscure thing that you don't think is really needed right now that might be become an important uh, resource in the future. And then I was talking about well, my current topic of how happy I am that uh, a lot of the shelters are being cleared out because people are realizing the value of adopting animals and have the time now to adopt and train and spend time with their animals. And I mentioned that I was really hoping that it's not going to be one of those things where they get an animal on a whim just for the company and then once they're busy when we're back to normal or at least people more people are allowed to go back to work and work in the office um, that they realize they don't have the time to continue to keep their animal uh, stimulated and good in good health and all of that so I'm really hoping that it's not just a phase where a lot of people adopted animals just for the companionship while they're bored at home and then end up returning them to shelters because they got too busy again when we're back to uh, functioning outside of the home. Um, but with that, I was saying how happy I am that I adopted because Kabu and Koji are really, really good kitties. Um, they're naughty, you know, in their own right. They do things sometimes that are not the the most pleasant, um, and they've been taught boundaries, and yet sometimes they feel like pushing those limits. Um, mainly Koji. Koji's the worst, but Kabu will definitely be sneaky um, and try to do something when you're not expecting her to. Um, but I was saying how they were waiting for me last night, like I went to bed, my partner was already asleep in bed, and they could have easily gone in the bedroom and cuddled with them uh, to sleep, but they waited for me to come to bed so that they could cuddle with me. And then when I woke up, they were still cuddling, they were still on me or on the bed, so it's like, one, they kind of like the bed, for one, they love the bed, but then two, they wanted to go in when I wanted to go in, so that means something, I think, that they, they care about me, and I know some people are like, oh, uh, cats, specifically cats, some people, like, don't even care, like, dogs are great, everybody loves dogs, dogs are just loyal and all that, but cats, cats are loyal, but they're, they communicate differently, they're, they're two different species. So they show their affection and their love for you and their commitment to you in different ways. And that's all it is. It's just different. It's no less and it's no more. It's just different. Um, but I do appreciate that because they care about me, they show it in the way that cats show it. And I think that's special. If you're anybody, if you're any owner of a pet, when they show you how they love you, it's a good feeling. That is one thing that is true. But where we are now, it hmm, it's super dark outside now, and I am just using my my soft box to light this room. It's kind of weird. It's actually pretty bright though. I mean, considering that the whole room is illuminated but it's not coming from overhead, it's just coming from my light box. But, uh, oh yeah, my camera cut out when I was gonna share you guys a story. Um, not so much like a story story, but on Friday, Kabu was just like screaming her head off repeatedly and basically she caught she caught something and there's this fuzzy cactus toy that my brother and his fiance got the cats for Christmas uh, this past December and 
um, it, there was like a whole set of different toys on like one sheet of cardboard, but this cactus toy is apparently like the hot ticket item for Kabu. Like she loves, 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 loves this cactus toy. And it's like the weirdest thing. It's like, it's fuzzy on one side and then it's a cactus on the other. Cat stuff is weird. Um, but she, she caught it brought it upstairs and put it in my shoe that's hanging outside of my bedroom and she was yelling and yelling because she when she catches something she'll she announces it to the world it doesn't matter what it is how hard she had to hunt for it which really wasn't hard at all um, but if she finds something and she puts it in somewhere where she wants you to pay attention uh, she'll just scream and scream and scream until you either acknowledge that she caught it or uh, she comes and finds you to let you know, hey, uh, come look at this thing I got. So I heard her, but I didn't know why she was yelling because she usually doesn't, um, she usually doesn't bring stuff upstairs. Uh, she'll usually catch something downstairs and then she'll just be wailing and wailing downstairs and then you're like, okay, all right. Um, but this time she caught it and she brought it upstairs and put it in my shoe. So I finally saw it like later on in the day. I was like, oh, that's why she was meowing. She brought it upstairs. Um, and so I brought it back downstairs. I was like, oh, thank you, Kabu. I saw your gift and put it downstairs. And she brought it back upstairs and put it by my shoe this time and did the same thing. So I was just like, okay. Um, I don't know why she keeps bringing it up to this shoe. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. And I was just like, thank goodness she's indoor only. Because um, if she caught a real mouse and wanted to share that with me, I don't know what I would, what I would do. Probably be happy she caught it, but if it wasn't from like in our house, <laughs> like why are you hunting these animals? But they love, they just love to, um, look out the window at different things different things like the chipmunks and the squirrels as quickly as I was talking about how my camera was doing it was on its last cell and now that it's like super super dark I'm like all right all right I will stop filming for a moment change the battery because the other one was charged and ready and then get the other one in the charger uh, but yes, Kabu is, she's just like my silly girl. She's so vocal. She loves talking and I am so, so, so tempted to maybe next month, well, next month, like June, maybe, um, buy one of the DNA kits. There's this one I've seen, um, they have it on Chewy, they have their own site, and they probably have it at a few other pet places, but it's called Base Paws, and it's specifically designed for cats, and it is a, it's just like, um, 23andMe, but for cats, <laughs> or, or, um, Ancestry, or whatever all of those other DNA and, like, lineage testing kits are, or genetic testing kits, and it doesn't, like, tell you... I don't think it breaks down like what your cat is susceptible to as far as like hereditary and like genes go, but it does give you um, background on where they, where their ancestors are from, or where they come from, if they're closer to like, um, like a lion or a tiger or um, any other kind of wild cat, like what descendant um, they closely relate to based on their genetic makeup. And it gives you a breakdown of like what purebreds they may or not may, but uh, I don't know. I don't think it's may because I'm, I'm pretty sure it is like accurately giving you a breakdown of, you know, what general makeup your cat is like. Is it an, uh, what they call like an oriental breed, like a Siamese? Tonkinese, a Burmese, is it more of like an American breed, like um, a Maine Coon or um, a short hair or um, 
the um, a Manx even I think a Manx is American uh, but like what region cat your cat exists from um, and I'm like hmm I mean it's not gonna be like 100% accurate but at least give me an idea because I'm always guessing all the time I'm like I bet to uh, Toki I bet Koji is like a descendant of like a Maine Coon American breed because he's fluffy he is a bulky cat he's not fat he's just a hefty old cat like a big bone like stocky like he's heavy he's like 15 pounds but he's just a big cat um, but he's like lean but he's like strong and big fluffy but he's like a medium coat so he's not like super super fluffy but he has like those tufts he has like the fuzzy slippers and everything and and then Kabu is so vocal I think even though she's a tabby um, green eyes I if I recall correctly like green eyes tend to run on the like more of the oriental side cat breeds than like a brown or a hazel type eye or golden eye um, so it's like green eyes she has green eyes Koji has green eyes too, but um, because of his fur and his shape, like his body, I feel like he might be mean, like, he's not 100% obviously, he's like, his mom is a Duluth tortoiseshell, so, and apparently his dad is gray. There was a neighborhood cat that was gray where he was from, so I was like, okay, he could be a Maine Coon relative, descendant of a Maine Coon, uh, maybe his dad was. So there's that. And then Kabu is vocal. She has green eyes. She's very chirpy. She's always like chirping at you and going like, burp, burp, burp. Meow, 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 meow. like, I can't even do it the same way she does it, but it's so cute. She's just very vocal. And I'm like, she's definitely part of like the oriental breed descendant. Like I just have that feeling and I always had that feeling about her. Um, but just to have like some more DNA to back up my theories would be nice. Um, so I think because Koji's birthday is coming up, his is actually May 5th. Um, oh, I'm thinking, should I do like a birthday special like downstairs where he normally resides and just have like a happy birthday Koji video? Because I didn't start my channel until after his birthday and then Kabu's birthday is June third so hers is coming up too uh, so maybe that'll be their birthday present is getting these DNA kits to find out what are they but it is something that's been on my mind for a long time it's something I wanted to do but now I feel like I'm I don't know for some reason I just feel more motivated to know what they are or what parts make them up. Because you can't like, you can't let the dogs have all the fun where you know what they are, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking even more about it. I'm like, you know what? Oh, no. How am I? I think it's because I'm talking to you guys. I am losing it. My pattern is not coming out the way it should. Mm-hmm. Do the thing. Yeah, and... Yeah, I thought something was up here. Uh, 
I am going to have to <laughs> make a stitch. This blanket is not, this blanket is going to have some, some issues. Oh, well. <laughs> thankfully, like all the places where I've had like my snafus, you, you can't tell. Like it's there, but you have to look really hard. So that's, that's my excuse. It's like, what happened? I swear I've been counting. And I've been looking for like my visual cues, so there's no reason that I should have this much trouble. But I do, I do. Now that I think I'm back on track, I was going to complain about the fact that, like, you could always, I mean, not always, but it's pretty easy to kind of look at a dog and be like, oh, yeah, you're part, you're part terrier, or you're definitely, like, a beagle, or you're a herding breed, like, there's something, you're mixed with something, but, like, we can kind of identify what those are, like, what kind of mix your dog is, but cats... I mean, they all kind of look like cats. There's not really much, besides like if they had a very uh, distinct like physical feature, like a curled ear or um, missing, like not missing tail, but like a bobbed tail, uh, um, those strong features of like a Maine Coon or, you know, they have really short legs, obviously they're Munchkin or a Napoleon or, um, isn't there another one? Munchkin, Napoleon, uh, Cupcake? I don't know. There's something else. There's like another little short leg breed or, oh, you're part, um, Cheshire cat? British, British short hair? Because <laughs> they kind of have like a big white face or you're a Scottish fold because your ears are, you know, those are like those cues. And you're like, oh yes, that's a that's a cat that's like that. But then most of the time it's just their coloring that you really don't know. Unless it's like a Turkish fan or Angora, um, Siamese obviously. But then Siamese is more like the structure because a lot of cats have points. Like those marks, like ears, tail, feet. Um, mouth area, like flame point, um, chocolate, all of the colors, dilute, you know, it, it's crazy. I mean, color, I think cats are like the coolest because of all the different colors they can be, but as far as telling what breed it is, um, if it's not full breed, if it's a mix of things, then sometimes it's harder to identify. Mm. 
right. We're looking okay for now. <laughs> How many times have I said that? Oh, too many. Too many. Uh, but yeah, I think... What else? Um, I think I might have another Zoom, like, coffee break with my friend that I met at the conference who happens to live near me. Well, she lives in the same state. She's not, she doesn't live near me at all. But she happens to be acquaintances with one of my other friends. And it's like, oh, small world. We should probably do a Zoom all together. That's what I'll do. I'll ask her if she wants to do, like, a triage. No, trio uh, meeting maybe like next week or something. So, let's see. Two, four, five. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out where am I messing up? I don't know. I'm like, I feel like I'm counting everything. Everything looks good. But then when I get to that other side, it's like, it's always when I get to this side, the odd side, that I have some problems. And I'm yarn overing the right way because that's how I get to the next stage. I have no idea. And I mentioned last, well not last time, but last week I had mentioned there was this yarn shop that I wanted to buy some cute yarn from. And I have changed my mind because this, each hank is like 30 something dollars. Now, 30 something dollars for a hank of sock yarn or something, not, not terrible terrible. If it's, you know, independent, independent business, independent yarn dyer, makes sense. But needing like four skeins of that, and I don't have that much money to spare responsibly. Um, I'm not going to do that yet. Now, um, I probably will do a combo because all of the color, all four colors look very, very pretty together. But I think I'm going to do like maybe like two because then it's like $60, probably like 65 with tax and shipping, six, $65, $70, which is a lot, still a lot of money on yarn, especially right now when I don't even have a project in mind. But I really want to support this yarn shop. And then there are like, two other yarn shops that have been sending me emails, not begging for money or anything, but just like, hey, you know, we're, we're doing this online model to keep uh, staying in business. And I'm like, I really hope you stay in business at the end of this because I really like them in person, even though I don't see them often because of how far away they are from me, I, I would like to go back in person one day um, and there probably will not be a yarn crawl this year because it was like uh, end of July, early August. And if that's going to still be a while for us to wait until we find out what's happening, uh, then that was probably a good deal of business for them just to have people know, learn about them, go visit them in person. Uh, so now that I do have them on my radar, um, I want to try to support them somehow. Um, even though I'm not made of crazy money and I still gotta buy all these silly groceries to feed myself and get ship, get them shipped because it's like so crazy. There was still like, surprisingly, like I needed toilet paper at Target so I went Saturday night. There's still like no toilet paper. My partner needs like butt wipes <laughs> like extra extra good cleaning butt wipes for the toilet and you know we usually buy like a big bag of them and 
there were none. Like, just single packs. And it's like, but that's, that's going to mean I'm going to run out. And they're limiting it to one. One pack of paper goods per person. So, you know, one of each type of thing. So, like, one uh, case of toilet paper, one pack of, you know, flushable wipes. That's, like, 30, 50, 30 sheets, something like that. Um, one case of tissue paper, like facial tissue. And I'm like, man, I usually, well, I mean, it's kind of weird because it's like, okay, I, I usually buy like a big bag of the toilet wipes, um, and that lasts a long time because it's like 120 sheets or something like that. They don't have them. So having that one means I don't have to go to the store a lot to get that. Maybe once every two months, if that. Um, so to have so few means I have to go more and, and expose myself more and potentially if I had it and didn't know because I am not showing symptoms and can't get tested, even though I have a face mask on, um, just being around other people, exposing other people, maybe more because I have to keep going back. So it's kind of weird. It's like you can't buy a lot of things because everybody needs them because everyone is buying them. But at the same time, it's like, if you're buying your normal stuff, why is it still out of stock if you're only allowed one? It's like, who's buying more than one of these things? And why all of a sudden are they out of stock? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. Because it's like, I am only going to buy one pack of butt wipes once every two months anyway, regardless. Like, that's what I do. One pack, 120 count. No, those are all out of stock, and they've never been out of stock before. I've always been able to get those. So, all of a sudden, everybody wants them now? Because, like, why are they out of stock? And tissue paper. If you only buy what you need when you need it, why is it all out of stock? And especially now that they're only allowing you to have one uh, per person. Like, the weirdest things. It's like, nobody was buying it all up like this before. And, and now that they're even restricting how many you can buy now, it's still out of stock. So people who don't normally buy these things are buying them now. If they used to have enough for everybody to take what they needed. Is that making sense? Is that making sense? Because that's how I'm hearing it in my head, but I don't know. It's weird. Because then it's like, well, why can't I just get my stuff that I normally get? Why is everything out of stock? If you're only buying what you normally buy, why is it out of stock? When it was never out of stock, when you buy what you normally buy. That doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, not talking about like the people who bought a whole bunch then, by now we've already restocked, you know, kept up with inventory. I mean, it's been a month, so it's still like low supply. But why, if you already went, got everything crazy, then why is it still out of stock? I, it's crazy. I don't get it. I don't get it. But anyway, um, I'm thinking, what do I want my cheat meal to be this week? Last week we, we had Chipotle. I got my chips and guac. And not like we went, we, we ordered ahead and picked it up. But no, I didn't, my partner did, because they had to go out to work. And so usually if they have to go out, then they get something, bring it back um, as like our 
our dining out um, endeavor. But uh, Chipotle was last week. This week, there's this, um, I think I might have mentioned before to you guys, there's a pho place that's, oh, my stomach's already growling. It's late. It's late. It's, um, it's almost nine o'clock and I still haven't had dinner. So I need to make dinner. So we'll finish this. Or maybe we won't. We won't finish this one. I'll just finish my story. Eh, now nah, you can finish it. <laughs> um, so there's this pho restaurant. Pho is F. Oh my god, no it's not. It's P-H-O. It's a Vietnamese hot noodle soup. And it is delicious if you've had it before. But if you haven't, um, I would say you, you don't know what you're missing. But uh, I think you can die and live your life without ever experiencing it but once you taste it and you're not afraid of unique flavors it is something else and so we really like it and there's one that's not close to us but it's close-ish and I had a taste for it for a while because like there was one night I was just at my desk and I had like a memory of the flavors and it just kind of like washed over my mouth and I was just like oh man I really want some now and it's been a while and I still want some and I still haven't had any and I'm hoping that can be the cheat meal you know we 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 used to go out um you'd either go out dine out or we would get takeout quite a bit and that was um, mainly because of my work schedule I just didn't have the energy to cook by the time I got home so that was like the easiest thing was just to order something in and now with everything else happening I'm like that's that's a uh, that's a lot uh, that's gonna add up a lot because now we still have to buy grocery and weigh and buy more because um, the delivery takes longer so by the time we know the next delivery is coming we have just used like the last bit of the last part so all of this timing stuff means that I have to spend more per shopping trip because of the likelihood of me not having what I need by the time I need to go out again and that's not to talk about the butt wipes <laughs> or the toilet paper because I don't buy a lot of that I just buy one pack at a time but like food I have to buy like maybe you know a gallon of milk instead of a quart because I know by the time I get to buy another quart there's not going to be any or the food like shopping service is not going to be able to get to me in time before I've already run out of that thing so it's not so much I'm buying more I'm buying a larger container of it than like a single serve or whatever but with that more money higher tip because I want to make sure the people who are risking their lives are still being able to pay for their own food so I'm tipping more so that is costing money, so I'm not going out to eat as much. So we've reduced it down to like a once a week thing where we we will go and get some takeout instead. Um, but yeah, I would like some pho this time. Um, just hot noodle soup, mm -mm -mm, so good. Feels so good, makes you feel so good. Um, but that is, that's been on my mind for a while and all I'm going to have is some soup tonight because, and not just any soup, just like instant soup, like boil some water, throw some powder in, stir it up and pretend that it's something fancy. <laughs> At least try to pretend it's something fancy. I don't know if I'm going to be that successful. But, I mean, on the plus side, uh, what is the plus side? I have Skittles at the Target. They surprisingly had candy in stock. You'd think that everything else wasn't, but candy was still there. And I really wanted, like, a sweet kind of tart type of candy. Um, 
and Skittles were on my mind, so I got some Skittles. So I'm happy about that. Ate some last night, and it was good. And what else? Did I get anything else? Oh, I got um, yogurt because... We usually get it from um, a, not a discount store, but like a, they own all of the processing, so they get like super, super cheap prices. They're not like crazy cheap, but they're a lot cheaper than like a regular grocery store. And um, since it's going to be a while before that delivery comes, uh, we just got some stuff to kind of pad us until then. And I will say that Target has, like, a more fun selection of yogurt flavors than the ones at uh, the grocer that we usually go to. So it's kind of like a nice little perk, like, ooh, banana cream and um, peach. Well, they had peach already, but, like, they had, like, their peach. This was, like, Greek yogurt peach, so tasty. We got Madeline's. Oops. Did I yarn over already? What? I don't know. It seems almost unusual for me to have a video that doesn't cut out at some point for some reason or another. But this one was because as I, I looked up and I was like, oh yeah, we have six minutes. Totally fine. Apparently I don't know what six minutes feels like and the video of course stopped before I could finish my row. Um, but here we are. We are just finishing row 61. So we have almost, let's see, let's do some math. We have 21 rows left because we're on, we just finished 61. We have um, 82 rows total of this color uh, total that we need to do before we can move on to the last color, which is a light cream. Um, actually, I have it right here. This light cream. This is, what color is this? It doesn't tell me what color it is, but it's like a light cream. <laughs> and this is gonna be the last color, so if you see, kind of visualize, it's purple, 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 and then bam, this pop of cream. And it's gonna be so cute, and I hope she likes it. Um, well, I mean, she's a baby. She's not going to really be that picky, I don't think. But um, hopefully her parents appreciate that their friend's girlfriend is making this baby blanket for them. And um, just to celebrate the birth of their daughter and everything like that. And maybe one day she'll get it <sighs> in person. We'll see. Um, but... Nonetheless, it's a thoughtful gift and it's a laborious gift because blankets, I see why people like to do baby knits, like little hats and booties and um, jumpers and stuff like that, or um, we call jumpers where it's just like a one piece thing, but that's a sweater in some other parts of the world, but uh, a baby onesie essentially um, is like a quick gift. I just feel like a blanket can be used so much longer than little baby clothes because they grow so fast, but a blanket can be a cute decorative thing to hang over a chair, pin on a wall, keep in a hope chest, fold it at the end of a bed, like you could do a lot with a little blanket like this. 
Um, but baby clothes, once they've used them and grown out of them, you kind of have to just wait until one day they either decide to have a family of their own or pass it on to a younger sibling or cousin or something like that. If anyone else is having kids, you never know. Um, like I keep saying, do not have any, well, do what you choose, but be mindful if you're trying to plan a family now because I would not want to be going to any hospitals if I don't have to. Um, and depending on how things are financially, you don't know, I don't know if you know, if you're going to be financially secure when all of this is over to support a child. Um, considering all of the markets and the economy and all that. If you live in a place where the economy is like a really big factor of how you uh, stay employed. Um, oof. But yes, uh, they already had their kid before this happened, so not going to preach to them. But if you're thinking of having children, wait. Just wait till this is over, I think, and then start your family. Uh, it's crazy out there. It's very crazy. Um, I don't think you'd want to be pregnant and having to go to the hospital if this is existing. Um, and we don't know what the vaccination's going to look like, if babies can take it, like, who's going to be able to be, um, protected. And if your child is immunocompromised, then they probably can't get vaccinated, um, and are more susceptible to this. So you just want to wait till things settle down. But nonetheless, there is a baby that is already here and I'm making her a gift. <laughs> I don't want to... Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. My, my camera cut out before I could finish and showing you guys this. And just wanted to say it's coming along. We don't have much to do left and I can't wait to finish it and add another project to my pile. Um, along with the other one that I want to do after I show you that pattern. So we'll have another two down the line pretty soon here and things will just be looking pretty good. Um, so with that, I hope you have a good day or night, whatever you're doing. I hope it's awesome. I hope you're having the most fun you can in our situation and stay tuned because you know, you'll see some more of me pretty soon. All right, take care and talk to you later and catch you next time. Bye.